In Lorraine Hansberry's Raisin in the Sun, the younger family of five lives in a tiny, dark, infested apartment on Chicago's South Side, sometime between 1945 and the present of 1959. The whole family eagerly awaits a $10,000 life insurance check for the work-related death of Big Walter, Mama's husband and the family's patriarch. Walter Lee Younger, a dissatisfied chauffeur in his mid-30s, wants to invest in a liquor store. In the introduction, he mentions news of another bombing, and he talks finances with his wife, Ruth. Ruth and Benita, Walter's younger sister, both recognize Mama as the one in charge of the insurance money. As the rising action begins, Walter tries to convince her to finance his investment, but Mama's against selling liquor. She wants to support Benita's plan to attend medical school. She's also thinking about buying a house. The family encourages Benita to pursue her wealthy suitor, George Murchison, but Benita finds him shallow. Another suitor, Nigerian classmate Joseph Asagai, helps Benita explore her African heritage. The check arrives, and Ruth reveals she's pregnant with an unplanned child. To Mama's dismay, Ruth has scheduled an abortion. In the climax, Mama uses part of the settlement money to make a down payment on a house. Ruth is at first overjoyed, but then shocked to learn the house is in Clybourne Park, a white neighborhood. Mrs. Johnson, the neighbor, stops by excited for the younger's move, but also scared of the violence they'll likely face from Chicago's white folks. Walter stops going to work, and he drinks. When Mama sees his deterioration, she gives him control over the remainder of the money. She tells him to put some aside for Benita's education and to decide himself what to do with the rest. We see an immediate change in Walter, and Ruth decides to keep her baby. While the youngers excitedly pack, Carl Lindner visits a white representative of the Clybourne Park Welcoming Committee. In the falling action, an uncomfortable but polite Lindner says he wants to start a dialogue. But it's soon clear the neighborhood residents want to buy back the house to prevent integration. Walter, Ruth, and Benita angrily reject the offer and ask Lindner to leave. Soon after, Walter's fellow investor Bobo reports that Willie Harris has skipped town with their investment money, Walter's as well as Benita's share. Enraged, Mama begins to beat Walter. The family, now in need of cash, considers staying in the apartment. An upbeat, hopeful Asagai debates the possibility of progress with Benita. Asagai asks her to move with him to Africa, to work with him to help improve the lives of his people. At his lowest, Walter calls Carl Lindner to accept the buyout. Benita's ready to disown her brother. But Mama insists Walter needs their love now more than ever. In the resolution, Walter instead tells Lindner they plan to move into the house after all. As movers load the truck, Benita says she's thinking about going to Africa. Mama tells Ruth that Walter's finally come into his manhood. With hope, as well as dark uncertainty about integration, the play closes with the youngers vacating their apartment and going to their new house. <laughs>